Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Fisherman's Landing in San Diego, home of the beautiful Polaris Supreme, located down there in San Diego, California, as you see, across the stern of the Polaris Supreme, and boy, what a gorgeous sport fishing vessel she is. 95 feet long, capable of making journeys as far south as Clipperton Island, that's off Costa Rica, and typically making three to five day trips, eight day trips, wonderful fishing you'll experience down the Baja coast on this beautiful 95 footer. She is equipped with the absolute latest in electronics, fathometers and sonars that will help you find the marauding school of tuna that you're going to have so much fun with and also you will find devices on board that will tell you the water temperature in any given geographical area and the skipper Tommy Rothery you see him there well Tommy he is always on the radio and you see the bank of radios there on the Polaris Supreme folks he is listening simultaneously to 12 radios at times trying to gather the information that's going to make your trip on the deck a successful one. A plotting device that tells you where you've been and where you might go. And take a look. This is a satellite picture of the area we're fishing. There's the water temperature. Tells you exactly where you're going to head. And take a look at this thing. No, that's not the fathometer. Those are not the fish down beneath us. That's, that's a little computer game that Rothery and I were having some fun with. Tommy Rothery and the Polaris Supreme, when you're on board, you're not going to believe the kind of experience you'll have and the kind of trip. Well, it's time to get going, and the Supreme and all of us are heading to the Loop, more commonly known as Guadalupe Island, about 200-plus miles down the Baja Coast. And I'll tell you, the Loop is one of those places where you may not catch the most fish you've ever caught in your life, but you just might catch the biggest fish, a lot of quality fish. And take a look at how bleak this island is. It looks lifeless, doesn't it? It's so rugged. But boy, it's anything but lifeless. There's all kinds of fish that are all through this area, home of some of the most fascinating yellowtail action you'll ever witness in your life. And talk about fascinating, take a look up on shore there. The Guadalupe fur seal is taking a little sun bath there in the beach. These things were pushed to the brink of extinction by the Russians at one time, a real docile creature making a comeback, and that's just one of the beautiful sights you'll see at Guadalupe Island. It's just loaded with fish, and we are here to take advantage of maybe some yellowfin tuna and also a good shot of yellowtail. That's what we're hoping for. Back there in the background, see the rocks sticking up? That's Pilot Rock, so very famous, so well known for the outstanding yellowtail action you can experience at the loop as we are rolling up on this magnificent island sticking up. There it is, Tuna Alley, where the tuna will fire up. Welcome to Guadalupe Island, everybody, as we're all set to take you to some hot fishing. Ah, all right. Ah. Fresh ones in the bow, need a direct hand up in that direction, please. Well, thanks to Tommy Rothery's little eyeballs, we slid into a massive area of yellowfin tuna. He saw one single jumper up there off the bow. The player Supreme got closer, and the sonar lit up with a massive big slug of yellowfin tuna, and this thing really wanted it too. Folks, I'll tell you what, one of Bob Alvarez's favorite little trick is to sneak up to the bow. See him up there? Yeah, he got a bait, he ran up there, put his track shoes on, and threw that bait, and I'll tell you so many times, this yellowfin will scream right uphill to the bow there. I know you want to be back in the corner where all the action and craziness is, but sometimes it's a little too crazy. So think about sneaking up there to the bow. Alvarez with a nice yellowfin tuna already on board. You see Guadalupe Island beautifully silhouetted in the background, and this is what it's all about. It's also about a struggle, though. And I mean a real struggle. Look at this gentleman. He's pulling with all he's got. He is really working hard, and that's what it's all about, getting pinned to the rail. And Stevie, yeah, you girls can come out there and do a marvelous job. She was a delight. She did such a great job. And Tommy Rothery is thrilled to death to see her with another yellow fin tuna. Tommy, give us a smile. And Stevie, take a look at that nice yellow fin tuna. Beautiful job. And folks, I'll tell you, can you appreciate how flat calm it is out there? How beautiful it is? It is absolutely perfect. You couldn't ask for a better situation. Up in the bow, another yellowfin tuna. No, this gentleman did not hook this fish in the bow. He hooked it way back in the starboard stern corner, and then this thing ripped him up to the bow. You've got to keep those fish right in front of you at all times. And if you have to go to the bow to do it, make sure you do. Aaron lifting on another nice yellowfin tuna. This is a nicer sized fish because he's really struggling to throw it up and on board the Polaris Supreme and just a beautiful yellowfin tuna for a fine gentleman and a guy who's a little tired right now but I tell you he put his heart and soul into every single fish he hooked 
on this great trip on the Supreme. And man, did he enjoy it. Did we enjoy having him out there. There he is. Great job. And another nice fish. Still more yellowfin. Too. This thing really starting to take off now. We've got a good slug of fish under us. Boy, I'll tell you, when these yellowfin come to the corner, they really want to chew. And that's some heavy line that this thing was taking on. Folks, remember, when the yellowfin tuna are ready to chew, when they really start to turn it on, you can go to the heavy string and they will bite it. And why not? Look at that. Bob Alvarez saying congratulations. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody. What a great job he did. And folks, I'll tell you, choosing that good hot bait, that is so critical to your success. Never a bait with a red nose. The hottest bait in the well, that's the one you want to pin on your line, and that's going to get you bites. You see Bruce here. Now, how do you pin it on your line? That's important also. Let's learn how to hook a bait properly. And folks, as this bite went on and on and on, the action became even more intense. It really started to go wide open on the deck of the Polaris Supreme, and we really had to be on top of our game. Folks, it's very important that when you're on these fish, you keep them right in front of you. Look at these anglers struggling. Stevie going underneath. That other young man coming right over the top. That's exactly what you want to do. You keep those fish right in front of you at all times. And in these hot bites, I'll tell you, it's going to be the difference between catching and losing a fish. Always keep them right in front of you. And folks, it's worth mentioning right now, get all of the preliminary stuff out of the way up front. I'm talking about getting out of the situation where your knots are not tied properly. Make sure you've got everything under control. Is your drag right? And the best way to do that is to turn to one of the deck hands, one of the great crew members on the Polaris Supreme and say, hey, Give me a hand here. I need some help. Don't be afraid to say it because they're there and they're willing to help at all times. Look at this. this Chris is showing this young man how to pull on that fish, how to short stroke him. And that's exactly what you want to know and how you want to do it. Folks, I want you to feel the power. Let me put you live on the Polaris Supreme right now. Going on the Polaris Supreme. Excellent fishing here on the yellow fin tuna and a nice grade of fish. Changing those baits is ever so important, folks. When you get a stop like this, you gotta change those baits. Tom Rossery made that clear to everybody. And the guys that are changing them are getting snapped right up, right when they throw. Nice job on this fish, pumping it just perfectly. What's the best way to do it? Well, how do you like to do it? Either nose hook it, but I like gill hooking it right there better. Barely catching the collarbone. Okay, and then you're gonna flip that right out on the corner? Yeah, I'm gonna try to hook the fish on here. Tom, when you flip that bait out, you're in free school? Yeah, uh, you let it go as fast as your bait will swim. If the bait stops, you take up the line. Now, Tommy, some folks are, are not sure about how to hang a fish. There goes one. Folks, there is the reason why you change your baits. Tommy Rothery just flipped a bait right on the corner and hung one. Good hot bait. Here he goes again. You're pushing your luck, Rothery. Push my luck, yeah. <laughs> you better be careful, huh? Well, Tom Rothery flew that bait right out there, man. I don't know how they do it but they hang those fish so very often. Yeah, I do know how they do it. Choosing that good hot bait is so important. Look at this action now. I mean, it's gone wide open on the Polaris Supreme. There are yellow fish in everywhere. Fish in the bow, fish in the stern. Everywhere you throw a bait, it's an instant bite. You throw an iron, it's an instant hookup. It's wide open on the Polaris Supreme right now. And this fish has gone absolutely crazy. And it really looks very, very good. Folks, Aaron looking to gap another yellow fin tuna. You can see that fish really struggling, really fighting. And he doesn't have it all that well. He's a little bit afraid to lift it on board. And he thinks he might need another gap to get it up on board. So when they have a fish that's not on the gap quite that well, what they do normally is call for another gap. And up and over it will come. Nice yellow fin tuna up on the deck on the Polaris Supreme as things are really going well now, and I mean really well. And it's worth mentioning to you once again, we are fishing right in the lee of Guadalupe Island. Take a look at another nice yellow fin for Stevie. And in the lee, you're going to experience this kind of weather. Flat, calm, gorgeous kind of weather, and it makes the fishing experience even that much more enjoyable. See, back there in the background, you'll see Guadalupe Island again here shortly as another yellow fin tuna comes on board. Guad on the background, and another yellow fin tuna up in the bow. And I'm telling you, this makes fishing just an absolute joy. Folks, you know, I still, I've got to tell you, I really think it's amazing that these sport boats can go out and find a body of fish like that. The ocean is an awfully big place, real big. High five for another nice gentleman. And boy, to go out there and find this fish and have it boiling off the bow like that, 
is really incredible. It comes down to a veteran skipper like Tommy Rothery knowing his game, having the electronics to get the job done, and of course just good knowledge of the area. And Tommy and the Polaris Supreme certainly had all that going for him to go out there and find this body of yellowfin day after day is incredible. Remember, as we've been telling you, a yellowfin tuna can move 50 miles in a day, no sweat at all. Hell, that's only two knots an hour. They can really move. But boy, to find him is really something that's pretty difficult. Bob Alvarez, Mr. Yo-Yo. Yeah, he loves to yo-yo the eye, and he drops that chrome jig, UFO number five, down about 200 feet, winds on it, and then, man, I'll tell you, Alvarez gets plant hooked up all the time. It's really a great way to go. Aaron lifting another nice yellowfin tuna for that young man. Give us a smile. You bet. You deserve it. Tremendous job as these yellowfin have gone wide open. Hey, back to the yo-yo just for a moment. I want to mention to you, heavy string. You want to fish nothing less than the 40 pound and the 60 is a very good idea. And that's one of the benefits to fishing with the yo-yo iron. You can get away with heavier monofilaments. Fish bite the iron and pay no attention to the mono you're using. So go with the heavy stuff. Still more fish being lifted on board. It's as wide open as you can possibly want it. Take a look at this fish for John. First tuna he'd ever caught. I'm telling you, John had a great time. He bought our other video, Bluefin Bonanza, and he said that's what made him want to go on a tuna trip. So he went out and he gave it a try, and he was so thankful he was on this great five-day trip. Another nice yellow fin tuna coming on board the Supreme. Take a look at this fish as it gets lifted on board by Tommy Rothery and Bruce doing a great job as he did the whole trip. Hey, look up there in the bow. That's Vinny with a fish. Hey, he's the cook. My God, that's an important fish. That's lunch. Somebody get a gaff. Somebody get on that thing. And you better believe it's important to get that fish on board because Vinny's going to take it in the galley and he's going to make some awesome grilled ahi as well as some wonderful sushi and sashimi that'll just blow your mind. The food on board the Polaris Supreme is awesome. And when you get to use some of this great fresh fish, it is really a joy. Another nice yellow fin tuna up there in the bow. Somebody putting a gaff in it and doing a nice job with the gaff. Hey, look who it is. It's Phil Friedman. I thought that a great white shark coming up to bite your fish would strike fear in the heart of an angler, or maybe a seal, but no, it's Phil Friedman coming at you with a gaff. You never know if you're gonna get your fish off board with me trying to poke him. There's Vinny again, doing a nice job, and Bob Alvarez says, hey Friedman, grab the gaff again. Get it busy, get this fish on board. Well, here it comes, I take a pathetic swing at it. It swims down and luckily swims right into the gaff for me as I'm able to put Vinny's fish on board the Polaris Supreme. And man, I'll tell you, Vinny's gonna put it to good use. What a fine man, what a great cut, and what a great job he did on that nice yellow fin tuna. Beautiful fish, and man, I tell you, I'm getting a bit of a workout on this trip now. Well, another fish is gonna come up and bite somebody's line up there. It's Adam in the bow, and he's tied up in a furious battle, so he says, get a gaff for him, but so I do. Third one in a row, I'm having more fun gaffing these darn things than anything else. Look at the jig, the fish trying to kick it out as it's still on the gaff again. That's a heavier type of jig, it's the yo-yo iron, but that is super effective. Great job on the Supreme.